tell us what's happening on the ground there. Well, good morning. The fog is clearing and the protesters are beginning to gather. It's not a large crowd as of yet, but it is a lively one. Remember the last time a protest gathered here, we saw up to a thousand people spill onto Auckland Motorway. Now, that picture is complicated a little bit today by the presence of counter-protesters who are setting up just behind us there. If there is a flashpoint today, it may be between those two groups, but the counter-protesters have stressed to News Hub they are here not confrontationally and are just celebrating diversity. As for what's motivating the protesters behind me, well, according to organisers, it's a bit of a hodgepodge. It's everything from mandates to three waters to an overarching sense of government overreach. Now, this is a movement that began as something explicitly anti-mandate and has morphed into something much broader, unified only by its disdain for government and its disdain for the status quo. All right, Finn, what can you tell us about the Umbrella Political Party announcement? Yeah, along with, you know, food and entertainment and many other activities promised today, there is something a bit more explicitly political. In a vague post on social media, the Freedom and Rights Coalition have pledged to unveil an umbrella political movement. Now, we don't know exactly what that means, but we can assume based on previous comments that it may be some form of union between existing anti-government and anti-mandate groups. Now, I actually spoke to some of those groups. I spoke to the One Party and to the New Conservatives. They both said, yes, they have had talks with the Freedom Freedom and Rights Coalition, but they are not part of any formal announcement today. Sue Gray from the Outdoors Party, she has not responded to my request for comment, so that's one to watch out for. However, Matt King, former National MP and now leader of the fledgling Democracy NZ Party, told me explicitly he will not be allying with the Freedom and Rights Coalition. I asked him why, and he said, quote, it's a matter of trust. So, without the support of existing parties, perhaps the announcement today will be more a statement of intent or even wishful thinking, but all will be revealed later today. Finn, what's their chance of electoral success? Because our own poll showed a fifth of voters would consider supporting an anti-mandate party in Tauranga. Well, look, yes, see, that poll was revealing, but I think it's important to remember that poll questions actually really change poll results. When you say, would you consider, that's a very different thing than will you show up on election day. People consider things all the time that they may not vote for. And if we take a step back and look historically, that 5% threshold, that's a really steep hill to climb, particularly for more these more fringe political parties. If we look at election 2020, Hannah Tamaki's party, Vision NZ, 0.1% of the vote. Advance NZ with Billy TK Jr. and Jamie Lee Ross, 1% of the vote. New Conservatives, 1.5% of the vote. And yes, basic math tells us that if we combined those together and all their voters voted in a block, potentially they could begin approaching that 5% threshold. But again, I think history really works against them here, because fringe political parties make for bad political bedfellows. They're very prone to infighting. Just remember what happened to Advance NZ in election 2020. They immediately imploded following the election. One party member, one party leader involved in the space said to me, everyone wants to work together, but no one wants to work underneath anyone else. And I think that sums up the struggle that these people will face trying to turn popular anger into political power. Mm. Finn, is this the last we'll see of these protests? Well, like it or not, absolutely not. It will not be the last we see of them. There are further events planned for Wellington and for Christchurch. And look, the march in Wellington may very well be as close as anyone here gets to actually entering Parliament, but I think it's really important that we don't just write off these protests completely just based on the long electoral odds, because politics is about a lot more than just the people in the beehive. In my role as digital editor, I've seen the anger and anti-government sentiment that motivates these protests surge over the last year. And as the pandemic recedes, it's not fading, it's growing even stronger. I think the anger motivating these people is real and it will play some role come election 2023, whether that's within Parliament or outside banging at the door. Speaking of outside, it's lovely to see you out there. Thank you very much for joining us. That's our Kaidi Puata, Finn Hogan. I didn't actually think you'd get out in, into the sun, get outdoors. This is the most sun I think I've absorbed all year, but I'll only do it when it's foggy. <laughs> all right. Take care, Finn Hogan, there, live from Pukekawa, Auckland, Domain. Yeah, man, who lives his life online, Finn Hogan, there. Uh, plenty to reflect.